We need to solve this exponential equation. And as you can see, it has lots of terms with um, intricate powers. And we have to somehow find the value of x with all of these four terms. So the, so the first thing that I would do, I would split up each of these powers that have more than one term. So for example, you can see three powers here that have more than one term, x squared and then minus one, x squared minus one, x squared plus two. So we want to split these guys and leave the second one alone for now. So what I want to do, I want to write it as the first term as two times x squared times two to the negative one. Okay, because we know using the properties of exponents, when um, you have two terms being added, in this case, x squared and negative one, you can express it as, uh, you can split the base two into two bases two, and each base will have its respective term as a power, x squared and then minus one, okay? So as long as you multiply these same bases with different powers, you will have the same result as having only one of these bases written with the sum of these two uh, respective powers, okay? So basically, I'm just splitting it into two terms like this, using uh, product and sum uh, properties of exponents. Now, I'm going to leave this guy alone, so I'm going to write minus 3 to the x squared. And then I'm going to split up this guy, the, the power here. I'm going to write 3 to the x squared times 3 to the negative 1, in the same way that I rewrote the first term. And then minus, and I'm going to rewrite this one, 2x squared times 2, right, another time the base, to the 2 power, right, to the square here. So now that we have that, what we have as a result, what we have as a result is 2 to the x squared over 2, right, because 2 to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 half, so we can write 1 half being multiplied to this as this thing divided by 2, right, 2 to the x squared divided by 2. And then minus 3 to the x squared is equal to 3 to the x squared over 3 minus 4. And where did, I, where did I get that 4? That's the 2 squared, right? That's the 4 times 2 to the x squared. Okay, so now that we have that, um, I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to basically add uh, for this term to both sides. I'm going to add that. And also what I want to do, I want to add this guy as well. I'm going to add this guy because, uh, and the reason why I'm doing that is that we want to have only one type of base on each side. So on one side I want to have the base 2 and on the other I want to have base 3. Right, so I'm adding the base 2 here, don't worry about that 4, but the base 2 with that respective power will be, co will be combined on the same side as this base 2. And again, don't worry about this, this 1 half is just a uh, coefficient, just like the 4 is, right? And so I'm adding this base 3 because I want the bases of 3 to be on one side. So I'm going to add this base 3 to both sides. So as a result, what we're going to have is this. I'm going to put the 4 first, 4 times 2x squared, plus 2 to the x squared over 2. So as you can see now, this, the base 2, this, this guy here is on the same side of the equation. That's, that's what I intended to do. And we're going to have base 3 on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to have 3 to the x squared plus 3 to the x squared over 3. So as you can see, this base, this part here, is also on the same side of the equation, which is what we wanted. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go on. What we will have now is that we will have, uh, we will basically combine the coefficients of these respective bases. In this case, 4 and the 1 half are the coefficients. So basically what it means, using the plus sign, we're going to have 4 plus 1 half because both of them are respective coefficients of the same base 2 to the, to the, two, uh, to the x squared as the power. Right? So that means we, we can write 2 to the x squared 
being multiplied to the sum of four and the four and one half the uh, respective coefficients and then that is equal to now we're going to combine these coefficients one third and then then one right there's a secret one you might say where's the coefficient well the coefficient is one when you don't see the coefficient it's always going to be one so it's going to be one plus one third as the sum of the coefficients for this respective base three with the power x squared All right so now what we're going to have we're going to have nine two right nine over two is the sum of these two four and a half four can be expressed with uh, denominator two as eight over two eight over two plus one half is nine over two 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 to the x squared is equal to four thirds and one can be written as three thirds using the denominator three three thirds plus one third is four thirds three to the x squared so now the the um, uh, now in this step you can use logarithms and I'm going to show you in the next uh, I'm going to show you after we're done with this method because there are three methods in this video I'm going to show you in the second method the logarithm method how we can use logs in this uh, in this step from this step on but for now I'm just going to use the algebraic method okay so what we're going to do we want uh, as you can see there is an interesting relationship here because two and three okay will correlate with the product of two over nines and four over thirds what i mean is we want to multiply both sides by two over nine that way we will get rid of nine over two you see because the twos cancel out nines cancel out as well right and also we want to we want to multiply well we want to divide actually in this case I'm just going to divide divide both sides also by 3 to the x squared and why are we doing that notice what happens we will have 2 to the x squared over 3 to the x squared is equal to now this guy is equal to what this guy is equal to 8 over 27 okay now why is this important you realize that you could both two and three have the same um, exponent x squared right so we can put it as two-thirds raised to the power of x squared right that's that's algebraically allowed to do and notice that 8 over 27 can be expressed as because 8 is a perfect cube and 27 is a perfect cube right be because it means that you can find the third root of 8 and the third root of 27 and that is two-thirds raised to the power of three right because two to the third is eight and th th three to the third is 27 so guess what happens when the bases are the same and they have the same uh, they have different powers these different powers will have to be equal because the bases are the same whenever there's an equal sign all right so that means technically that x squared is equal to three because the bases are the same right so x squared is equal to 3 so that means you can solve for x directly right you can solve for x directly so that means x by square rooting both sides x is equal to plus minus the square root of 3 so there are two solutions we didn't check them yet but there are two solutions and I will show you after we're done with the logarithm way I'm going to show you how to check these solutions in the original one I'm just I'm, I'm going to work it out for you so you know it is both of these are actually solutions and if one of them is a solution because x will be squared when you check in the original equation the other one the negative radical 3 will will also work right be because when you square the negative positive doesn't matter it's going to be the same thing x is always squared in the original equation there's no x to the first power x is always squared so minus radical 3 automatically works whenever the plus works as well so I'm going to check with you the plus after I work out the logarithm way all right so here we go so the logarithm way will take this step and I'm going to show you how to use logs uh, from this step on. We can take logarithms of both sides, right? That's going to be great. So we're going to, let's take the logarithm. So uh, I'm going to show this with, a, with an arrow here again. Let's use an arrow here. So the logarithm of uh, 9, 2 2 to the x squared is equal to the logarithm 
of the right side, which is 4 thirds, 3 to the x squared. OK, so now the logarithm, uh, uh, based on the properties of logarithms, we know that when we have uh, division, when we have an input of the logarithms of the logarithms as division, we know that we do log 9 minus log 2. But keep in mind, first we have to carry out the multiplication, right? So what I'm getting at is that we're going to do log of 9, 2 plus log of 2 to the x squared. Yeah, lots of exponents there. Is equal to log of 4 thirds plus, and again, why plus? Because 9, 2 multiplies the 2 to the x squared, right? Whenever the inputs, whenever the uh, input of the log is a product, you will take the logs of its respective factors, right? So these are two factors accounting for the product, so you will take logarithm of each factor and add it to the logarithm of the second factor, right? That's the logarithm properties that you should recognize and memorize and practice them always plus the logarithm of 3x squared. Okay, and we're not done yet. Notice that we can simplify this because we know now when it comes to the quotient of the two factors involved, we will take the, the log of the top and subtract the log of the bottom from the, from the log of the top, right? So what I'm getting at, log of 9 over 2 is going to be log of 9 minus log of 2, so you should recognize that. Plus, and now let's take care of this. The power rule says that when you take the log of an input raised to the power, the power comes down before the log, right? So it's going to be x squared log 2, right? Log, log of 2 to the x squared is x squared times log of 2, right? So the power comes down, the power x squared comes down. There's nothing left in the power. It's just the base by itself raised to the first power. And that's equal to... Hopefully, I will have some space. Let's see. So, log 4 minus log 3, right? You should see that. Minus log 3, I will have space. Plus, now again, the power comes down, x squared log 3. Okay? So, x squared log 3. So, so what, what does that give us? Um, Keep in mind that we have to actually, we only have 1x squared here, right? We don't have x to the first power, so that means we can directly solve for x. If we make sure that the x squared is on one side only, right? So to do that, we, you need to subtract x squared log 3 on both sides. So minus x squared log 3. And also you want to subtract... Um, uh, you, well, you don't want to subtract this, but you want to subtract that, right? Because you want to isolate your x squared, right? There, there should be nothing left in the end but the x squared on the left side. So we need to solve for it. So minus log 9 here, minus lo uh, plus log 2, um, and minus x squared. That was in green, right? So minus x squared log 3, minus x squared log 3, and in blue we had what? Minus log 9 on both sides, plus log 2. Okay, so what do we get as a result? Let's see, so this cancels out. This doesn't exist anymore. This doesn't exist anymore. So what we have is x squared log 2 um, minus x squared log, log 3, minus x squared log 3, the green. And that's it. And on the right side, we have log 4 minus log 3 minus log 9 plus log 2. Log 4 minus log 3 minus log 9 plus log 2. Okay, that's good. So now uh, x squared terms are on the same side, so that means we can factor out the x squared, so that means we will have log 2 minus log 3. And let's simplify this using the properties of logarithms. We know 4 can be expressed as 2 squared, so log 2 squared minus log 3 minus log. Now again, 9 can be expressed as 3 squared plus log 2. 
So now what you want to do, you want to divide both sides by log 2 minus log 3 because you want to isolate your x squared. So that means these two terms will be gone and we will have solved for x squared. So now let's see, log 2 squared is 2 log 2 because the power comes down minus log 3 minus now two, 2 power goes down so minus 2 log 3 plus log 2 over log 2 minus log 3. So x squared is equal to, let's see, any like terms there, this one, then that one, then these two are like terms. So 2 log 2 plus log 2 is 3 log 2. Negative 2 minus 1, so minus 3 log 3 over log 2 minus log 3. Now, this x squared turns into, you, you realize you can factor out the 3 in the top, so that's going to be 3 times log 2 minus log 3 over log 2 minus log 3. So you see this cancels out. This is what we want. So x squared as a result is equal to 3. Square rooting both sides gives us plus minus root 3. So we don't know whether there are solutions, but it's uh, sufficient to check only one of them because x is being squared in every single exponent. Right? So that means negative answer still is the same as the positive answer. The, if the positive is, is a solution, the negative radical 3 is a solution as well. So let's check it. Let's check the left side first with the positive radical 3. So we get this. Minus 1. Minus 3. Square root of 3 squared. So I'm just checking the left side, right? I'm not checking the right yet, just the left. So I'm getting 2 radical 3 squared is 3, so 3 minus 1 minus 3 to the 3, so that's 2 squared minus 3 to the 3rd, that's 4 minus 27 is ne negative 23. So let's check the right side. 3 to the square root of 3 squared minus 1 minus 2 square root of 3 squared plus 2. So that's equal to 3, now square root of 3 squared is 3, minus 1 plus 2, that's 3 again, squaring the square root, plus 2. So that's equal to 3 squared plus 2 to the fifth. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, not a plus, I don't know why I wrote a plus in there. This should be a minus. So that's... Uh, a minus that's a minus right so that's three squared oh sorry we already have three squared so that's nine minus 32 My, nine minus 32 is exactly negative 23 right so bingo both sides check with the positive square root of three so automatically negative square root of three is also working so the solutions are two solutions right x is equal to positive square root of 3 and x is equal to negative square root of 3. Okay, so stay tuned because I'm, uh, I'm not finishing the video yet. This is just the logarithm way. And I'm going to show you a very nice way of doing it using the factoring way. And this is going to be the slideshow. I'm not going to write anything. It's going to be very well printed out for you. You're going to enjoy this very much. So here we go. So now, we're going to explore in this video how to do this problem using factoring. So, just like in the previous video, the first few steps are the same. So what you want to do is, you want to combine uh, these two into a single one, into a single base, by splitting them into separate bases, two with different exponents. And the same thing on the right side, just like in the logarithm way we've explored in the first uh, part of this video, and the same thing in the third term, then what happens is, again, just like in the previous uh, method, we've divided by 2 because of 2 to the negative 1 serves as a half. 
3 to the negative 1 serves as a third. 2 squared serves as a fourth, uh, as a 4. So now, what happens to this now that we have it? Now we have to add basically everything on one side, right? So this is already the major step uh, that differentiates the first method from this one, right? In the first step, we use the logarithm, so we have to have non-zero terms on both sides of the equation. But in this method, the factoring method, we will have a zero on the right side. So we need to add everything and subtract everything from the right side to the left side, so we have only a zero on the right side, right? So this is what we have as a result, right? We added 4 times 2 to the x squared, and we subtracted 3x squared, 3 to the x squared, divided by 3 on both sides, right? You can see that in blue. So everything on the right side is 0, and that's exactly what we want. So now that we have that, what are we going to do next? Well, we will combine the like terms, right? So we, we, we need to put 4 times 2 to the x squared next to the first term, because they both have 2 as the basis. And these two must be... Uh, written next to each other because they both have basis 3 raised to the x squared, right? So here's what we do, right? We make sure that these two are written together, 2 to the x squared terms are written together, and 3 to the x squared terms are also written together, okay? That will help us actually combine them because we know that there's a half multiplying 2 to the x squared and there's a 4 multiplying the 2 to the x squared, right? That means we can add them together as a single constant that will multiply 2 to the x squared, okay? So now that we have that, and also 1, there's a 1 here, and there's a 1 third constant being multiplied to the 3 to the x squared, right? But we know that we can place a minus outside so that if we place the minus outside, we will need only the plus here, okay? And that's why it's plus one-third and not minus one-third. So now that we have that, we can actually combine it into a single fraction. One-half plus one-four is essentially one-half plus eight over two, that's nine over two. And this is going to be three-thirds plus one-third, that's four-thirds, right? So this is what we have. Nine-halves times two to the x squared minus four-thirds times three to the x squared is equal to zero. So now what you want to do, you want to multiply both sides of the equation by 2 over 9 so that there will be a coefficient of 1, okay? There will be a coefficient of 1 for the 2 to the x squared. And why do we do that? We do that so that it will be easier that way, right? We, you know, the, the fewer numbers we have, uh, the fewer coefficients we have, basically, the better, right? It's going to look cleaner, it's going to look easier to... To work with it later. So multiplying both sides by 2 over 9 essentially gets rid of 9 over 2 and it makes the 4 thirds here being multiplied by 2 over 9 and 0 times 2 over 9 that would not change right that would stay to be a 0. So as you can see this becomes one coefficient which is exactly what we wanted and this becomes 827 right 4 times 2 divided by 9 over 3 there and then 0 does not change. So now what happens? Now, I want you to direct your attention to this. You, you realize that 8 is a perfect cube, and so is 27. You know that the third root of 8 is going to be, the cube root of 8 is going to be a 2, right? And the cube root of 27 is precisely 3. So that tells me that this can be factored using the perfect, uh, the difference of two perfect cubes, okay? That tells me that. So in order to do that, but before I do that, I want to get rid of the x squared. I don't like the x squared here. So what I want to do, I want to let y is equal to x squared so that this equation looks cleaner. Instead of the x squared, you will have the y in there. As you can see, the variable becomes easier to see, right? It becomes cleaner, it becomes less messy. So as a result, this is what we have because we did a substitution y is equal to x squared, so instead of this, we have this picture that we can work with. So now, how do you use the difference of two perfect cubes to factor this? You let a be equal to 2 to the y raised to the 1 over 3rd, and y raised to the y 1 over 3rd, because when a is cubed, you will have 2 to the y, so a cubed will be 2 to the y. That's why I'm taking the cube root of 2 to the y and setting it equal to a. And the same thing b. 
Remember I said just now that the cube root of, it, cube root of 8 is 2 and cube root of 27 is 3. And that's precisely why b is going to be the cube root of 8 divided by the cube root of 27, which is 2 thirds. And we have to do the same thing for the 3 to the y, right? That's why it's set to the 1 third power there. Okay, so if you let that, if you make the substitution, you will be successful. Now recall that the formula for the difference of two perfect cubes is going to be exactly a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So as a result, if you make the correct substitution, if you work your algebra right, you should get this. For the first factor, which is a minus b is this. 2 to the y over 3 minus 2 thirds times 3 to the y over 3. That's a minus b. And then this, these three terms here, the trinomial that you have, in terms of y is going to be this fellow, right? This messy exponential uh, expression, <laughs> okay, with three terms. And that's set to zero. Now you might say, how do you solve that? Well, remember that when both of them are multiplied to each other and set to zero, it means either one of, e either one of them can be set to zero. The first factor being set to zero or the second long uh, the second long factor can be set to zero, right? This one with three terms. But this one, the problem is with this one, there's no solution. There is a solution here, but there's no solution for the second one. Now, how do we know? How do we know there's, a, there's no solution for this uh, three factor expression being set to zero? Well, again, you're gonna make a substitution. You're gonna make a be equal to two to the two y over three, b, to the, uh, b is equal to the second term, and the c is equal to the third term. And why does it matter? It matters because you're going to check the discriminant. Recall in the quadratic formula, you had a b squared minus 4ac in the radical. Okay, and you know that whenever it was in the radical, it was less than zero, it, will not give, it would not give you a solution. Right, so here's what we're going to check. You might say, wait a second. But there's no, there's no, um, these look like they're all constants. And even though it's a variable, we can treat them as constants, a, b, and c. You might say, but where's the, uh, where's the, um, the variable, right? There's not, there's no, uh, ec, like a z squared, there's no z, right? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you can still treat this as a discriminant, a, b, and c, even though there's no variable. There's only a variable that uh, is not, written in a you know usual way that you've uh, that you've accustomed to see right but you can still check the discriminant check the discriminant using the quadratic form you know that is b squared minus 4ac if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero there is no solution so let's check that so how do we know what b, uh, b squared minus 4ac is b squared is going to be precisely the square of this square of two thirds is four ninths Square of 2 to the y over 3 means that the 2 multiplies the y, essentially. That's all, right? Nothing crazy. And squaring this means that the, the, the 2 multiplies the y as well here for the base of 3. Right? So that's b squared minus 4, right? Minus 4. A, a is here, 2 to the 2y over 3. And c is this, 4 over 9, which you see. And 3 to the 2y over 3. Perfect. Beautiful. Now, you realize that this is the discriminant that we have now. And you realize that 4 9 minus 16 9 give you essentially minus 12 9 Minus 12 9 reduced gives you minus 4 thirds. So minus 4 thirds times this, right? Because that doesn't change. Minus 4 thirds times 2 to the 2 y over 3 times 3 to the 2 y over 3. Now you realize this is going to be less than 0. This result, the discriminant that we found, the simplified discriminant, is less than zero for all y equal to x squared. Now, why? remember that this is the substitution we made earlier, y is equal to x squared. So no matter what the x is, if it's positive, negative, it's going to be squared. y is always going to be positive. If x is zero, y is also going to be uh, um, y is going to be zero, but it, this is still going to be positive, right? So let's check this out. If x is negative or positive, y is going to be positive, right? Because x is squared. So that means this thing is positive. This thing is positive. This thing is positive. The product of these are positive. There's a negative 4, 3, no matter what happens. Negative times a positive, bingo, negative. So less than 0, right? 
Whenever x is 0, y is going to be 0, but, but look what happens. 2 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 0 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times the negative 4 thirds is still negative 4 thirds, negative number. So that means no matter what the x, it could be 0, positive, negative, y is still going to make sure is going to have a, such a value that their negative will always win, right? So the discriminant will be less than zero for all y. So there's no solution for this crazy three-term factor being set to zero. So now let's return to the factor that does have a solution. This is going to be this factor, the easier case. How do we solve this for y? We'll solve this for y by first um, adding both sides, uh, adding two-thirds, to the three uh, two thirds times three to the y over three on both sides, right? We wanna we wanna have non-zero on one side, on both sides. Okay, so we do that. Now you can you can solve it either using logarithms or another way, but I'm just I'm just gonna show you how to do it without the logarithm. So you realize that there's a two thirds, and there's also a two and a three. So there's a correlation. If you divide both sides by three to the y over three you will have base 2 divided by base 3 with the same power y over 3. And there's also a 2 thirds. So what I'm getting at is that you see the correlation. 2 to the y over 3 divided by 3 to the y over 3. It looks like there is a fraction 2 over thirds being raised to the same power y over 3. And there's a fraction of 2 thirds there. right? And this would cancel out. right? So this cancels out indeed. And what happens is that 2 to the y over 3 divided by 3 to the y over 3 is equal to 2 thirds. So that means 2 thirds can be raised to the same power y over 3, according to the rules of the exponents, right? So 2 thirds to the y over 3 is equal to 2 thirds. Now, you realize that this result guarantees that uh, since 2 thirds is raised to the first power, since the bases are the same, two-thirds, that means y, their respective exponents should be set equal, right? So y over 3 will be set equal to 1. So as a result, it, it is what you see. y over 3rd is equal to 1. Multiplying both sides by 3 solves for y. So that means y is equal to 3. And we said earlier, because that's the substitution we made, y was equal to x squared. So that means x squared is equal to 3. Solving for x gives you x is equal to plus minus radical 3.